Hello guys, this is Navin Reddy. In this series of tutorial, we'll talk about Java 8 features. So the latest version of Java, which is Java 8, has introduced lots of features. And one of the most important features of Java 8 is Stream API. Now when we talk about Stream API, it helps you to calculate data or it helps to process your data. So in the world of uh, big data and Hadoop, we have something called as functional programming. So till 1.7, we used to work with object-oriented programming, so everything was object. But in case of Java 8, we've got a new concept called as functional programming. Now what is fun functional programming? Functional programming simply says, you don't have to focus on how to do things, you just focus on what to do. The remaining part will be, the remaining part will be handled by your stream API. When you talk about object-oriented programming, you have to focus on both the things. First, what to do, and second, how to do. So we'll try to use a stream API in this series of tutorial. But before understanding this, the importance of stream API, uh, let me go with the example. So let's say I have a main function here. In this main function, I have a add a list so to create array list, we have to say add a list integer. We need all integer values, and we'll say l. And to create an array list, we can we can do one thing. We can create a list instead of add a list. Okay, and then one of the way to create the object of add a list is using this arrays class. So you can simply say arrays dot as list. And in bracket, you, have to, you can pass the value. So let's say values are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. So you have six values here. Let's import the package, which is array. So we'll say Control shift i to import the package. Now in this scenario, what we need to do is, let's, uh, let's print all these values. So in order to print these values, what we need, a for loop, right? So basically, you can go with the normal for loop. You can go with enhanced for loop, or you can go with iterator. So initially, let me go with the normal for loop. So I have to say for, I have to say int i, the value of i will be zero, and then i less than, or i less than, let's say six, and i plus plus. Since we have six elements, we have to reach till five. Now let's print this value. So we'll say s out, and we'll say l dot. So in this l, you have a method called as get, in which you have to pass the index, which is i. Uh, instead of L, let me give a proper name which is values and somewhere here in this L will say values and if I run this code now you can see the answer is one two three four five six right so this is how we can print values so instead of using this logic what we can do is we can use a second way so we can just comment this part and the next way of, do, of printing this value is by using a enhanced for loop or we can use for iterator first. So we can define an iterator. So iterator, iterator, it's an interface in Java, which belongs to our package java.util. We have to specify which type of elements we have, integer, and we'll say this is i. And then since you want to create the object of interface, you can use a list which is values, because in this values object, you have a method called as iterator. So using this iterator method, method, it will return you the object of iterator. Okay. Now once you got the object of iterator, we'll we'll navigate in that iterator. So all the values from all the uh, values from this values object will go to this iterator object now. So let's navigate. How to navigate? We have to run a while loop, and we have to check if there's any uh, element next. So when you when you are at the first position. You will say, okay, check the element, okay, you have one. Then check the two, it's you have two. When you reach six, it will say, what next? It says, no, there's no value after six. So it will say, okay, let's break the loop. So it will run this loop from one value, the first value to the uh, fifth value or the sixth value. So in order to in order to print this, we'll say system dot printl and, and we'll say i dot next. So has next will return your Boolean value. It will just check the value. And next, we'll actually iterate the value. And now if I run this, you can see the output is still same, right? Now what next? So this is, sec this is second way. Now let's implement the third way. Now to work with the third way, we can use enhanced for loop. So what is enhanced for loop here? You can simply use a for loop. 
And instead of defining the starting point and ending point, you can simply say i colon and you have to specify values. So this i will fetch data from values field or values uh, list. Now how to print will say s out and will print the value of i. And now if I run this, you can see the output is still same. Then question arises: why we have these three different ways? It's because this is the earlier way of doing it. So let's say if you want to print only from uh, second value to sixth value, so you can use this for loop. Now iterators are used normally to print, to update, so you can do modification iterator also, or you can do modification iterator. But let's say if you want to print all the values, irrespective of the starting point, ending point, you can use enhanced for loop. So if you want to print all the values, obviously the best option will be the enhanced for loop. But if we talk about any of this loop, these loops are called as external iteration. This it is, they are external iterations. What if we can provide a feature called as internal iteration? So we have something called as internal iterations. So what's the difference between external iterations? In external iterations, some for loop outside of your object, it will try to fetch the data from the object. So same goes here. You can see all this loop, they do the same thing. They fetch value outside. What if in your, in your collection, you'll be having a method using which you can increment? So that is called as internal iteration. And we can achieve internal iterations with the help of Stream API. Now, how exactly we should be coding for Stream API, that we'll see in the next part of the tutorial.